a number of very useful and interesting Python libraries. Today we are looking at Scikit LLM. Before we talk about Scikit LLM, let's talk about Scikit Learn. Now every data scientist must have used Scikit Learn library at least once to train machine learning models uh, using these three APIs, right? So first we instantiate the model and then we'll use model.fit to train the model using the training data and then model.predict to predict on unseen data or during the inference, right? So everybody familiar with these three APIs. Now to train a different model, we simply choose a different model, but these two APIs remain uh, very much the same, right? What this new library Scikit LLM aims to do is, it enables the access to LLM models through these three familiar APIs, okay? So that we can comfortably continue working with uh, existing scikit-learn APIs. Okay. All right. So, uh, first we are importing this SKLLM config, uh, through which, uh, we will access the LLM models. And then we are going to do a bunch of tasks today, like zero shot classification, few shot classification, and this will be interesting, the dynamic few shot classification, the summarization and the translation, okay? The library also provide a few test data sets for quickly uh, testing the capabilities of the library. All right, now today we are going to use uh, the LLM models from OpenAI, but if you want to use uh, a different model, for example, let's say Palm from Google, uh, we can uh, use them as well, okay? So first, we set uh, our open API uh, uh, API key, okay? Uh, uh, with the configuration. And then, uh, let's look at this data set. So it's a classification data set, uh, which we imported from here. So first, we are printing uh, the unique values in the target variable. So this data set, it's a sentiment analysis data set. Basically, we have three sentiments, negative, positive, and neutral. Now, if you print uh, the text as well as uh, the labels, this is how it looks like. So here is our first text and then the label, okay? The second text and then the label, okay? It's, it's a very simple data set. Now, let's start with zero sort classification. So as I mentioned here, this library aims to bring LLM capabilities using the familiar uh, three APIs from scikit-learn, okay? So first we instantiate the model, then we do the fit, and finally we make the predictions or inference, okay? So here we are accessing the model using zero-shot classifier, okay? And we are using the model ZPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, here you can set uh, any open AI, AP, open AI model, okay? And then here we are doing uh, the fit. Now, and uh, okay, I will explain this uh, in a second. And then we are doing the predict for the first two records uh, in the uh, uh, training data, okay? So the predicted labels are uh, both positive for the first two records. So basically, after training the model, actually we did not train the model. Again, I will explain in a minute. So we pass this data uh, as an input to the model and we got the prediction as positive. And then we got, uh, we use this data as an input and we also got a positive as the prediction. Okay, that's what we did. The important thing to note here is we are not really training any model here. As you know, this is a zero shot classification, meaning we simply call the model with the data and the labels. We are not fine tuning or we are not retraining the model. Okay. So when we call this command, 
what is actually happening is in this target variable uh, y the model is simply taking all the unique values in y okay so as we saw from here the y target label has three unique values so negative positive and neutral so when we run this command the only thing happening is the clf model is taking positive negative and neutral as the target labels so it is not even looking at what is in this x value because this is a zero shot classification right and then when we do the predict we are providing the text and we are asking the llm model to classify this text into one of the values of y okay that's what happening here now to demonstrate this more clearly here we have created uh, this label all labels which again contains uh, the three uh, target values and then as you can see here when we do the fit in place of this x train we are passing none okay and we still get the outputs so what this means is what we pass in variable x does not matter i mean if we if we have some data we can pass it but it can be none as well so during this method only the labels are read from the target variable and then when we make the predictions the model is taking our input text and classifying the text into one of the labels coming from uh, this variable okay so uh, again i must emphasize even though we are calling it fit we are not really fine tuning or training any model which is usually the case with model dot fit in scikit-learn but in order to maintain the consistency and to have this scikit-learn uh, api uh, feel the authors have developed the model uh, in this way okay all right now let's look at this multi label classification data set so again uh, so here we are printing the text as well as the labels so here we have a text and this first text it has two labels quality and packaging and here we have another text it again uh, uh, has two labels now all these examples happen to have two labels okay here is a one with three labels a service delivery and quality so this time we are going to classify the data into multiple labels okay so it's the same thing again zero shot classification and here we are saying the maximum number of labels uh, should be three okay and then we are doing the fit similar to before this x is uh, not considered here even though we are providing it and the model simply taking what are all the values uh, of y so basically y is a list of lists right for example the first element in the list contain these two values the second element in the list contain these two values so it's going to find out all the unique values in this y and then when we call the model uh, with predict here we are passing two records so the first record is classified as both quality and packaging and the second record is uh, classified as quality now the maximum number of labels uh, can be three okay now similar to what we saw here with none as the x variable we are going to do the same thing here okay so these are all our candidate labels so instead of providing a list of lists here we have uh, one list and then uh, this time we are not passing any x data and we are only providing uh, the target labels okay and then when we do the prediction it again predict uh, uh, up to three classes per record okay since we have passed two records so this is the output or the prediction for the first record and this one for the second record okay all right now let's go back to our classification data set uh, which is uh, one label uh, per record right either positive 
നെഗറ്റീവ് ആർ ന്യൂട്രൽ ദ സെൻറ്റിമെൻറ്റ് നൗ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡു ഫ്യൂ ഷാർട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ആസ് യു പ്രോബ്ലി നോ ഫ്യൂ ഷാർട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഗിവ്സ് ബെറ്റർ റിസൾട്ട്സ് കമ്പയർ ടു സീറോ ഷാർട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ റൈറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് വി ആർ പ്രൊവൈഡിങ് ദീസ് ഫ്യൂ എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് വാട്ട് ദ ഇൻപുട്ട് വിൽ ലുക്ക് ലൈക്ക് വാട്ട് ദ ഔട്ട്പുട്ട് വിൽ ലുക്ക് ലൈക്ക് ദ എൽ എൽ എം മോഡൽസ് ആർ ഏബിൾ ടു ഗിവ് ബെറ്റർ റിസൾട്ട്സ് വെൻ വി പ്രൊവൈഡ് ഫ്യൂ എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് കാൾഡ് ഫ്യൂ ഷാർട്ട് റിഗ്രഷൻ ആർ സോറി ഫ്യൂ ഷാർട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓക്കെ അല്ല സോ ആസ് വി സി ഫ്രം ഹിയർ അവർ ട്രെയിനിങ് ഡേറ്റ ഹാസ് തേർട്ടി എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ഓക്കെ ന വെൻ വി ഡൂ ദിസ് ഫിറ്റ് this time the x values are important the reason is because it is few shot classification our x values are going to be passed to the the model in the form of context so when we do the predict what's happening is all these 30 records are passed as few shot examples okay and then we are making the predictions for two records right uh, this is what the prediction is now there is a problem here we know all the llms they have a input context uh, token limit right and also how much we get charged for using the model depends on the number of input tokens as well as the output tokens right so we want to help this ml llm model by providing few examples but we don't want to provide too many tokens in the context so that we don't get charged heavily right so for that reason uh, what we do in dynamic few shot classification is we will selectively select a few examples uh, in the few shot classification okay so here we are saying hey for each class i want to pass only two examples right so for example here we are saying here our data contain 30 records right when we set n examples is equal to 2 what it means is from each class only two examples are passed to the model in the form of context so which means we have three labels so only six out of these 30 records are passed uh, to the model uh, as context now the important thing is how do we select which six uh, examples should go as a few shot uh, examples right now when we do this fit a lot is happening under the hood now the llm model what it is doing is it is converting these 30 training examples into embeddings okay so it the first step during the fit it is creating the embeddings and storing those 30 embeddings in the memory and then when we call the model with predict uh using uh an input text the input text also get converted into embeddings okay so here we have our input text embedding and then we have our training data embeddings now the model uses the nearest neighbor algorithms so by default k nearest neighbor algorithm to find out six nearest neighbors because we said this to be two and we have three classes it will find out those six nearest neighbors two from each class and pass only those six records as a context during the inference so this way even though we have provided many examples uh during the fit method the model is actually taking only the number of examples times the number of classes in the context so this way even if the, our data set uh, is huge we are able to find out the best examples as few shot examples right these are the best examples because we are using these embeddings methods and nearest neighbors to find out 
the examples which are closest to the record we are trying to make predictions of okay now the reason why it failed is because during this method we are creating embeddings for these 30 uh, training examples right because i have a free account i am using a free account uh, there are some rate limits on uh, the free account right so that's why it has a uh, failed but if you have a paid account uh, this sh should work as it is okay now as i mentioned uh, this method is using uh, the k nearest neighbors uh, which is a uh, slow so we can use this anai uh, another uh, uh, nearest neighbors uh, algorithm which is quite fast uh, so in this code all we are doing is we are uh, setting this anai uh, nearest neighbor method instead of the k nearest neighbor method okay so this algorithm works much faster uh, the reason again it failed is because here we are trying to create uh, embeddings for 30 records uh, using the free account so we ran into this uh, rate limits okay but otherwise it should work all right and then uh, let's do two more very simple tasks so here we have a data set uh, the summarization data set okay uh, it's very simple uh, data set so here we have a paragraph of let's say uh, five lines another paragraph another paragraph etc okay now this time uh, it's fit and transform right uh, uh, so here we have initialized this gpt summarizer uh, again we have an open uh, ai model and we are asking it to summarize using maximum 15 words okay so this is our model and because we don't have the concept of this fit and predict this time we are making fit and transform okay again we are passing only the first two records so the first record uh, is summarized uh, as uh, this uh, which should be around 15 words okay so basically we have summarized uh, this uh, into this okay using the fit transform method which again uh, resembles scikit-learn apis okay and finally here we have a data set to translate so this is in spanish all right uh, similar to summarize uh, this time we have translator uh, method and we also provide what is the output language okay so we are using the fit transform method and uh, uh, uh the spanish sentences are transformed into english okay so this is our first example and then this is our second example why is it translation not available uh, it's quite strange hmm all right okay uh probably again ran into this rate limits for the second record but as you can see for the first record we have spanish to uh, english translation okay so in summary uh, the scikit llm library it enables us using some of the llms functionalities like the classification multi-label classification zero shot few shot summarization translation etc using this well-known or familiar scikit-learn library like uh, apis okay that's all for this video uh, thank you very much